Hey guys, how's it going? Working on a couple of things today. First one is a planting project. Check out what I've got in here. Tuscan Sun Heliopsis looking absolutely fresh and beautiful. We're going to put these out on the new property today. And then we are going to harvest some artichokes. So we have some that have gone into beautiful bloom. They are the most gorgeous blooms. I can't wait to show you guys. But I want to harvest some of them to dry, to use in arrangements. And I'm going to try a couple of different methods. I wanted to start up here in the shade because it's just so nice right here. But oh my word, aren't these so happy and bright and so late summer. They just kind of personify that late summer feel and I just love it. Uh, let me show you a tag. They grow uh, two to three feet tall, zone three through nine, and we space them out about two feet. So they can grow uh, like 20 to 24 inches wide. I'll probably put them closer to the 20 inch spacing because I do want them to become kind of a good size drift. I like these because they're easy maintenance. You don't have to deadhead them. You can and that will help them bloom more and be a little bit more productive but it's absolutely not a necessary thing. They will still look beautiful. They're also incredibly uh, drought tolerant, heat tolerant which is what we need out there. I know I've said a whole bunch of times that I'm not going to be putting any perennials on the new property but I did plant denim and lace out there the other day and it looks so pretty and there's just really nothing like a good amount of perennials to bring some nice color and interest to the garden. So I'm gonna try to choose things that uh, don't need a whole bunch of maintenance. Like they don't need to be sheared back mid season. These just bloom all summer long, all the way through frost, and I don't have to go do anything to them. You know, like with your Veronica's and Salvia's and things like that, which who knows, I might end up putting stuff like that out there just for the color, but you do have to go back mid season and shear them back. And I'm gonna try to avoid as much of that as possible. So I was thinking things like Heliopsis, sedums, um, echinacea, rudbeckias, the Russian sage, those types of things that kind of come into their own midsummer and look really good the rest of the year. And I'm okay with that if I don't have a ton, like I'm planning on doing a lot of spring bulbs out there and I may not have a ton going in the spring. I'm not sure. The whole area is going to evolve. Super excited about these though. Let's head out there. And right now it is 70 degrees outside this morning. It's supposed to get to 93, but it just, it feels so good. You can kind of tell like when things start to turn, when the mornings feel really pleasant again. I'm loving it. And look at our grass as we go by here. Isn't it looking awesome? So we've made it about halfway with our weed control, which we're just pulling by hand because we have such a huge puncture vine problem out there. We can't really spray them. The grass is too young and the puncture vines are about ready to release seeds. So we're trying to get those pulled before they do that, um, at, which will help tremendously in the future of this grass patch and the weed issue. So anyway, we're really, really happy with how it's filling in. I love it. Also, if you see a couple trucks and some guys in the background, they are working on the irrigation around the uh, cut flower garden right now. And this right here is where I wanna plant the Heliopsis and maybe even get it weeded and mulch just in the general area. I just planted these Apache Winds uh, grasses, panicums right here, and then uh, the three yellow twig, Arctic fire yellow twig dogwoods. I have not run irrigation to those yet. I was kind of waiting because I might with however I end up putting this big drift of Heliopsis, I might run the brown drip tubing instead of individual emitters, in which case I can run the tubes by these plants. I'm just not sure yet. So I'm hoping by the end of this project, I've got them planted, drip run to them, and then this whole kind of area mulched a little bit better. Remember the wind that took down our evergreen tree? These went through that wind, perched out here, not protected by anything. Don't they look so good still? And our grass pathway will go right here. So I think it'll be beautiful to have these hydrangeas have the purple denim and lace kind of towering around those. And then we'll move gently into a nice drift of yellow blooming perennials right in here. And we'll just kind of work our way back as we find things we like. This method of planning is really fun. <laughs> just like find something that's beautiful, pop it in the ground where you have a space. <sighs> It's kind of freeing in a way. Okay, so I brought the big auger out. It's bigger than I need for these size of cans, but I figure that we need to dig as big of a hole as we can so that we can add in some compost, which I have here, and some biotone starter fertilizer. So anyway, let's just get after it. Let's get this done.
Oh, I think that is gonna be gorgeous. I love it already, even with no mulch, even with no grass pathway, it's gonna be beautiful. You will notice that I did plant the entry beds, kind of, entry beds, they're a different shape, but I planted them with the same things just to start us off, but I don't wanna do everything balanced in this area. I want it to feel a little bit more, um, I don't know, just free, I guess. Uh, and on this side, about where the truck is, and it might span, I'm not sure if it's gonna come and reach this bed, I might do a couple of evergreens, but I am putting a meadow in on that side. I kind of wanted a natural kind of wildflower feel right on this side of the driveway. I thought that would be really sweet. And then we're gonna do another big section of meadow over there. And then of course the meadow in the orchard. But I think that these Heliopsis will fit in perfectly. And we've got the beautiful purple blooms of the denim and lace. We'll have the bright yellow. And they, st so they start kind of behind here and they go around this red bud and kind of tuck in right up to the hose faucet, which I think we are gonna put a charcoal gray hose link right here. So that'll clean up that little area too. I'm just waiting for the post to be put in and then we can bury that and I can continue on with a few more. I might put a couple of stepping stones right in here to the faucet and then we'll do another perennial here. I feel a new surge of motivation after every single new plant we put out here. It just makes me so happy. Now I did take our winged weeder and I went through this area that I'm gonna plant in because there were itty bitty puncture vines starting everywhere. It was like a little carpet. It would have probably taken me an hour or two to weed it by hand. So I just kind of cut them off at the top, which is not my preferred method, but it sure does make it faster for now. So this is the winged weeder right here. I really like that tool for weeding. If I'm gonna use a tool for weeding, that's the one I like. All right, so now I just need to dig a bunch of holes and get those planted. Well, the auger made quick work of that. So now I can put amendments at each one of the planting sites, put a little water in each hole, get these all planted. Look at this gorgeousness. Is that a word? I think it should be a word. It is so pretty. Look, it's like instant impact. I actually have a coral berry shrub that would look pretty kind of nested into this little dip in the Heliopsis. Some pink berry action back there, but I am gonna need to introduce some red leaf um, kind of color in here. I've got uh, a red birch right here, a royal frost birch that kind of has purpley leaves. And then of course there's the blue spruces, a lot of green in here. So I'm gonna need to add in some other colors as we go. It's just gonna be so fun. Like a nine bark would be beautiful there too. Like a group of them or a smoke bush, like a small one, the Winecraft black, something like that. If you found yourself a pile of dirt, Nice. You need some of your equipment out here. I do think the most efficient way to water these is probably to use the brown drip tubing with holes every 18 inches and maybe run two runs of it through this group. So I need to go get the adapters where I can go into a three quarter inch supply line and adapt down to half inch. Um, and that way I can also run it by these grasses. I think that'll be perfect. All right, bud, let's go to the barn. We got to get some irrigation supplies. You fix in the dirt, that's a good and, and important job for sure. Okay, let's go, bud. Okay, so I've got all of the irrigation supplies back here in the gator. I'll just kind of run through what I'm gonna do because we didn't have the proper tee. I was hoping we had a three quarter inch tee that had three quarter inch on this side and this side, and then had half inch access right here, um, which we just ordered some, so we'll have some coming. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just go ahead and tee off with the regular three quarter inch tee coupler. So let me line this out, hold on. Let me lay it down somewhere where it makes sense. So I'm gonna be cutting into our supply line. I'll put the T in and then this three quarter inch tube, which I'll cut down. And then at the end of that run, I'll use a three quarter inch to half inch, just straight coupler. So this will go into this tube and then I can take off with my brown drip tubing. I'm going to be using these silver clamps on every single connection here. 
Um, I've got a little tool that clamps them so that we don't have anything blow uh, with water pressure. Look at all these puncture vine seedlings. Anyway, so what I'll do is just tap in, probably right in here somewhere, uh, with that three quarter inch, and then I'll run my brown drip tubing this way. I'll loop it around and come back this way. Yeah, I think it's just gonna take two runs, kind of right in between, like that. And then over here with the dogwoods, I hadn't run water to those yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it how I've been doing it out here with the quarter inch black poly and then a quarter inch brown poly with holes every six inches around the root ball. Um, that way I don't run, I don't wanna run unnecessary water. And so if I ran that brown drip tubing over here, it just waste a whole bunch of water along the way. So we're just gonna do targeted irrigation to these shrubs because they get about five, six feet wide. So we don't need a whole bunch of irrigation around them except right at the root ball. check this out so we're just kind of mulching as we go here because it's such an enormous area so every time we plant something new we plan to mulch it does help with uh, moisture retention weed suppression all of those sorts of things and we are mulching with compost um, because our soil out here is you know not the best so we figure for the first little bit if we mulch with compost and let that kind of work its way into the soil that's got to be a good thing um, so look at these heliopsis a couple of them are a little irritated at me for planting them in the heat, but they overall look so, so good. And I can just imagine what this little area is gonna look like once it fills in. And it gives you a little bit of a better idea. I kind of did the mulch line, not super great, but a little bit along where the grass is gonna be. So you can see how much space. I mean, I kind of expect like this one here is the closest and because they get two feet wide, that one will probably kind of go over the pathway a little bit and then we can kind of come in with something here and something right there and I just mulched right up to that little trench where the hose is and then we'll think about coming in with some shrubs maybe with some red leaves right in here and I want to get some lilacs and forsythias in here we need to think about some spring color in terms of shrubs as well and everything has drip run to it so I did water everything in of course I put water in the holes introduced the root ball to that kind of wet environment and then watered them in again and then ran drip and then i ran drip to all the other stuff that we planted the other day so now we don't have to drag a hose out to any of this stuff at all and then i think i mentioned we are going to be putting a hose link a charcoal gray one kind of low right here so we won't see the hose quite as much i don't i'm not a huge fan of having this is one of my old old ones I don't really like having bright hoses in the landscape. They just kind of stick out a little bit to me. Okay, so now we're gonna head into the cut flower garden, cut the artichokes. You can see that they're actually working the trencher in there right now. So I think it's a bit loud. Um, so what I'll do is just cut all the artichokes that we're gonna preserve and we'll take them to the barn. You ready to go get some artichokes? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I don't think it's too loud. Just real quick, I wanted to show you the row of artichokes. So they're beautiful, beautiful plant. I started these from seed like in January or February, somewhere around in there. Um, and then we planted them out, boy, was it sometime in May, I think? And they have just been productive plants. Look at these. Nuts, they're absolutely nuts, these plants are amazing. But look at the blooms, they look like sea urchins. And they are, pollinator attractors you can see right there all the activity going on 
So I'm just gonna take a few blooms. Oh, look at that little petite plant, how cute. This one is amazing. Anyway, there they are. Sunflowers and amaranth. Oh, the emerald, emerald tassels is starting to look gorgeous. Oh, I need to come out and cut some of this. How pretty. What do you think of these flowers, bud? Right here. See the purple flowers? What do you think of those? Cool? Okay, let's pick some of them. Got the artichokes back in the studio where we're going to attempt to dry some of these. I did want to show you a few that I harvested earlier on. So look at that. That is a dried artichoke right there. And these I cut and just sat in a basket, kind of like that, and they just dried beautifully. And they're wonderful to use in garlands and wreaths and just all kinds of decor. And you can leave them natural like this if you want that look, or you can use gold leaf, or you can spray gold paint on them, or whatever you wanna do, um, just to make them look you know, a little bit more glitzed up. Um, I am going to attempt to use some of my silica gel crystals right here. I've got a couple of containers. I've got to figure out though, this is, this is my conundrum. These are really big. And so it's going to take kind of a deep, I'm going to have to cut the stem off probably, and it's going to take a deep container. So I need to maybe locate something different. And I thought I had more crystals than this, and then, but I think this is it. So we might only be able to preserve a couple, but I wanted to see if I got some of these in the silica gels early enough to see if they would preserve with nice color um, and with the blooms intact like that. I'm going to attempt just drawing some hanging upside down as well to see how that turns out. Either way, they're all gorgeous in whatever state they're in. I actually spent quite a bit of time on the internet seeing if I could find any other methods of drying these to make them look maybe a little bit nicer. Uh, but basically all I found was turn them upside down, hang them to dry, and that was pretty much it. I could have spent a little bit more time, but I thought it would be fun just to wait until this video goes out and then I'm gonna read the comment section because you guys always have really good suggestions. So if any of you know of a different method of drying artichokes, I'm gonna leave several on my plants. <laughs> so that I can uh, maybe try out some of your methods as well. So anyway, let's try to get these uh, set up to dry here. I made it. I had just enough to completely cover the three artichokes. Yay! All right, so I've got a couple of them hanging just from a shelving unit. Woo! Take two. I have these hanging from a shelving unit in the studio and they're right underneath the air. It's actually nice and cool in here. I don't know if that's gonna make any difference at all, but I think they'll dry out fairly quickly in here. Um, anyway, I just am really looking forward to seeing what happens to the blooms, uh, like this method versus the silica gel crystals because while I know they aren't gonna look like amazing after we're done with air drying, I'm not so sure that they're gonna come out of the silica gel crystals any better. They might have good color, but I don't know if they're gonna be extra fragile and if these are gonna to wanna to break off when I try to get the sand out of them or not. It's gonna be interesting for sure. And then these that don't have blooms, I'm just gonna keep them here in this container because I feel like they will dry up beautifully whether or not they're hanging upside down or not. Um, they kept their shape really nicely earlier on with those little ones right there. Uh, this one is interesting though. This one right here, it almost looks like it has a white bloom and it's already kind of dried at the top right there. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, if that's normal. 
but it looks different than all my other ones. I think it's really beautiful. Okay, so in a couple weeks time, I think it's gonna take at least two weeks for these artichokes and the silica gel crystals um, to dry because there's so much moisture. It might even take longer than that, I'm not sure. This is gonna be like, this is 100% an experiment, but hopefully in a couple weeks time, I can show you guys a progress update on how all of these three are doing, how they're drying, how they look, uh, because it'd be really fun, especially if we can get these plants to winter over. I think they're, I think they're a zone seven. I don't know, I'm getting answers like all over the board, but I'm gonna mulch them up out there, see what happens if they come back, hopefully they come back even stronger and we get even more artichokes from them i'm just surprised they are bearing like they are like during their first year for us when they're not even something they're a really long season crop usually um, i just i think i got lucky with how hot this summer's been so while you know the heat i like to kind of complain about the heat and misery and all that and stressed out plants but it is good for some things you know it really makes our crops grow quickly and bear a lot of fruit so anyway that's it for today just thought you guys might be interested in seeing a new perennial go in out on the new property and then these artichokes are just kind of like a novelty to me because i I'm not used to growing them and I'm just so thrilled with them. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.